Hey guys, I am back with one more, but not just one more. This is my 28th video on YouTube, so I'm pretty stoked about it. This video, I do a couple of things. I install a K&N filter on my Riker 600 and new spark plugs. But first, I want to give a little announcement. I have my first giveaway on this video. It is this Thrill Mouse Moto poster. It is handmade, hand pulled, screen, silk screen, printed, all that good custom local stuff going on, acid free paper. Uh, it's a design that I had commissioned, so it's definitely original. I have four of them. I'm going to be giving out four of these to my subscribers to the Thrill Mouse Moto channel. That is those three plus that one. They're already wrapped up, ready to go. They just need postage to those four winners and I'm going to discuss that and how to win a little bit later in this video but first we go out to the Thrill Mouse Moto Garage aka Kevin's Garage and we install the K&N filter inside the airbox that one like that we do a little bit of noise reduction and a little intake there and then new spark plugs oh, yep straight out that's your coil what Thrill Mouse Moto. Like I said, Thrill Mouse Moto Garage, that's Ron, that's a Kevin's Garage, which if you've seen some of the videos, you're kind of already familiar with that. Hey, Kevin's got all the good tools. You're probably familiar with that. You can see him. He's already, he just gave his a wash. I started recording as soon as I heard him. I was like, does that mean you heard me? <laughs> Yeah, dog. We just give it a give her a roll wash. Rinse. Nice. Just got actually I got everything like yesterday. It just came in like Christmas. Yeah, I got we got this. So that's you want to put these cool. in too? Yeah, we can yeah. knock that yeah, out. Okay. So K and N filter and new spark plugs. That's four of them there. Uh, I bought them in a four pack because I'm gonna do two and give two to Ryan so he can do his 600 too. You only need two for a 600, but the 900s take three spark plugs. So first step on doing all this is uh, me just taking off the, the panels. If you are if you have a Riker or you're already familiar with it, you know that's kind of like one of the first steps you do with, with most things with the Rikers. You have to take those panels off, so you're probably used to it by now. A lot of people just use screwdrivers. If you can get your hands on one of the, like, the tool like I have, that green one there, it makes it way easier. There's like four on each side, so it makes it a quick job. Or you can have one of these little plastic ones too. Just anything like that that's usually meant for like uh, car interior plastics will pop them off pretty easy. But you got to get those Chiquita banana panels off first because it's pretty much the first step of getting the, the frunk off because the spark plugs are going to be right. there. So if you're taking this screw out or putting it in, it has a tendency to fall. If it falls, it'll fall in here or in here. And it's not fun to get out at all. Short of putting taking the whole headlight out, it's you've got to get like beat on those pliers in there or something. That's Kevin just giving you that pro tip. I thought I'd leave that in there. That sounds like something that people would want to know. I kind of mind it as I'm doing it, so I'm glad he even told me because it's my first time taking my frunk off, but it's got two screws just on the front. Once we get those two off, and they're kind of weird because you're just going through plastic, then we just got to unclip the top part of the frunk, and it's just kind of like a weird way it grabs on. We kind of have trouble with it, but it eventually pops off, but those are kind of like the four locations of the tabs there. I leave it to Kevin. He's done it before. And if you haven't done it before, it's kind of sketchy to do, so you can at least watch him do it. Aha! So, we have red on top, green on bottom. I have forgotten to plug these back in. <laughs> you mean the right way or just no, at all? completely. Oh man. And then had to like take it off and redo yeah, it? Yeah, to retake it all apart. So this is your 
pressure sensor so when it closes. Oh, you've got the lock on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little different. Yeah, Kevin's way colorblind. I don't know where you got green from. It's just like straight up black. One's black and one's red, so just remember, you know, where they came from. So when you put it back in, the first thing we do is uh, we just get a socket extension ready because we want to get in there and get those ground bolts off of each one. Like I said, two on mine because it's a 600, so just a little bolt there. Yeah, it's more of a bolt than a screw. And there's just two of them. You can kind of see with Kevin shining that light in there. Just like most of my stuff, this is not a step-by-step. This is just me showing you guys what I did currently on my Riker. So it might help out a little bit just to see someone else doing it, but probably not going to be that educational. But yeah, get you some good tools like Kevin and things. You know, you get a lot of stuff done pretty quick. Like I said, most of the stuff you're doing the same thing, especially with the panels. Most stuff you have to do, you have to take the panels off. So you'd be an expert with those. And just try not to drop anything because like what Kevin said earlier, it can be a drag. You're gonna have to start taking a lot more stuff off if you do that. And you just kind of get those ground cables out of the way because you're gonna have to unclip those um, what do we call them those coils yeah it's like coil like tubes get the clips out of the way you can use like a screwdriver like what I'm doing and then you'll hear like a little snap and then you can kind of wedge that flathead screwdriver in between the coil and that clip and just get it out of the way if you get them out of the way you should be good because you really got to get your hand in there and I know it looks like a big spot but it's kind of weird to get in there and then try to use the a little bit of force you have to to pry it out so shaking it like that the coil to break it free so and that's the easy one the other one is closer there to the um, whatever that is like a little hose you can see right there so that one gives, is going to give me trouble on this and man I, I don't even know as far as the the 900 because like I said there's three and I want to say the third one is right underneath that hose or like on the other side of it or somewhere real troublesome so i'm not really complaining about this one it was just weird trying to get your get your hand in there and still use the strength you need for it but just working it back and forth got the coil out for me pretty easy and then underneath there you know you have the two spark plugs so it's, it's not a bad task so just have a place to put everything and just remember you know the order you did it and then we get sidetracked at this point and we just try to replace that boo-boo like dollar tree looking tape they put in there like with the factory and it was just to get like some wiring out of the way of the frunk so when you you know pull it out and put it back in you're not like pinching anything or anything weird like that so Kevin had some pretty cool like high heat fancy tape that's way better than that dollar store stuff so we just rip it out rip it out and replace it like i said really just us getting sidetracked get that going and then we work on just getting the spark plugs out after that but not a lot of steps it's just something different if you've replaced spark plugs before it's probably not gonna be too different for you though but just trying to do like little extra things um step it up a little bit they say it's possible for you to see increase in gas mileage on this so we'll see how that goes pro tip on the extensions that you put on your ratchet if you don't have them long enough like we do don't put the small one at the very bottom you don't want to get that stuck in that cylinder like that real hot when we pull it so i use the the towel to pull it out I mean it makes like the socket hot and that's one down it shows you how it looks kind of in there but of course you know we had a socket wrench so it's got like a little rubber grommet in there that snatches that spark plug pretty good and just breaking it free and then pulling it out like I said real hot so kind of already have a plan on how you're gonna get that off put it on a um, like a shop rag like that 
I use the shop rag to pull it out and the shop rag to set it down on. Now those, of course, you're not going to put them back in so you don't have to remember what order they're in or anything like that. And that's both spark plugs out. You can see how like that rubber piece came off with the coil. So I kind of remember which one that is. And that's just comparing the gap there with the new one to the old one. And the gap, you know, it's straight. Just sometimes it's all busted or twisted. So you just want to keep an eye on it. But those had like the little cardboard protecting it. So they look straight and they don't look far off from the original ones. Just make sure it kind of grabs in there, that rubber grommet, like I said, and that, um, that socket. And I just screw it by hand for a little bit just to make sure when I start ratcheting, I'm not gonna like cross thread it or anything. I do each one by hand for a little bit and then put the socket wrench back on or the ratchet. And then I just like, well, I do that. And then I make sure again that it's hand tightened because I'm just gonna ratchet it down like 20 degrees, almost 25 degrees. And you'll see that right here. So just putting the socket back over the spark plug and then doing it by hand just a little bit so I can really gauge it how far I ratchet. And that's pretty much just from here to just right there. From what I always understood, you just kind of want it a little bit tight. You don't want to go crazy with it. Same thing on this one. It had the protector on it and we check out the gap and it's not anything weird. So we run with it on this one too. Same thing. Like I said, just pop it in the socket, uh, make sure that little rubber piece grabs it tight, drop it in by hand and then ratchet it about 20 something percent or 20 something degrees, my bad. That's me almost forgetting. But yeah, like I said, not too sure how true any of that is, but figure do some more stuff about, you know, upgrading it where I can. And I mean, just the fact that like most OEM stuff on this is kind of whack. So replacing it with something I know is good and maybe possibly get an improvement on it. I'm down with that. So might as well just get it done. Plus, like I said, when you, you're friends with someone like Kevin with all the tools and the know-how, really no excuse. So once those are in, we can, uh, well, I still need to tighten this one, but then we're just really popping those coils back in. And you, it seems like it'd be a drag to have to clip those back in, but it's really not so bad. Like I said, not complaining from what Kevin told me about doing the 900s and having three of them that sounds like a drag so real easy remembering which one it was because one the the rubber piece came off with it you can see there in the hole and then one's still on there so easy to remember but i did kind of put them in a certain position where i can remember which one's the front and which one's the back this one's the harder one so we get it out of the way first as you can see, you can't even see the clip right there. It's underneath that hose. And I just make sure I, I get it not only pushed down all the way, but of course lined up with the bolt hole for the ground so I can get that going too. And I do like this, like underhand, under that hose. You know, the coil's not going anywhere, so you can see it just snap snap into place right there. And then I just get the, the bolt kind of hand tight right there. Because I can knock both those out at the same time when I get the ratchet set back up for it. After I drop the other one in. So hand tight on that ground. We'll drop the last coil, the second and last coil in. Make sure it's lined up, pushed all the way down, and then lined up with that ground hole again. Yeah, I always push it all the way down and then double check. Get the clip back on. That one was kind of weird. 
you think it would be the easier one, but I had to guide it in. Using one hand to push, but guiding it in with the other. And then getting that ground bolt back on. Yeah, have a, uh, I would say like if I gave a tip on anything I'm doing is, of course, have a good place to keep all these bolts and screws and stuff. I think I was just using Kevin's pocket the whole time. And my bad on that. It looks like it's my camera that's going whack like that with all those waves, but it's that flashlight that Kevin has on it. But I wanted to, you know, show what I'm doing. I've seen like videos before, not Riker stuff, but just other mechanic type videos and you, you just can't even see what they're doing. So like I said, it's not a step by step, but I want to do what I can for you and see what I'm doing. And then we get to start it up. Skipping, we're good. So what would it be looking for if we did a bad job? So to answer the question on that, Kevin said it would just sound really bad. So if it's popping and going crazy and it sounds bad, that's that's probably you probably did it wrong and need to do it again. So and then uh, after we do that, we're pretty happy with it because it fires up and it sounds good. So it must be good. And then we uh, pop open this air box so we can replace it, replace the, the stock air filter with the K&N air filter. This is actually my first K&N air filter on anything. So if you've seen the other videos, I just got a new exhaust. I got the Predator from RLS Exhaust. So I'm trying to match it, you know, the airflow with it, you know, a cool way. I know they make those like, um, I don't know what you're calling it, like mass airflow or, or uh, cold air intake style ones. Um, I think it's like Trill Performance or something makes those. Oh, those look really cool. And I bet those step it up a lot, especially if you have a exhaust to match it. But this is kind of like the cheaper on a budget way that I'm going to go with it. I might end up doing something like that, but this was like way easy just to get it have it sent and pop it in it was like 40 something bucks so this is just two screws at the bottom and there's two oh there's two screws and two clips at the bottom but you don't have to take those clips off i take them off on this but i think you can just drop it down like a hinge off those two clips but you definitely have to get those two screws off just like that there yeah see it could have just been hanging like that and I could have pulled it off but yeah it's actually pretty clean I mean I haven't had it that long if you've been following the video so but I was still I was telling it was like well so if everything OEM with the Riker is $300 I can sell this for $300 right so we popped that that K and in there and it's all oiled up and everything I need to see what's up with the maintenance on that I think you're supposed to like re-oil it on the regular to make sure it's you know cleaning the air and doing its job and then you know kevin's real weird so he smells it which i don't know what that he's like i smell everything when i get it <laughs> i don't think that's a regular thing that's like a it's got a name some type of disorder name to do stuff like that but yeah real oily and ready to go i guess i thought it was going to like come with oil so i guess you have to do that on your own or buy extra whenever it's time to do that and you just pop it back on. Like I said, you didn't have to take those clips off, but real easy to pop back in. And then at this point, we're like, you know, why not? We use this door sill here. Um, Kevin used it on his. He has a stock exhaust. So from what I understand with a stock exhaust, you hear a lot of noise come out of this intake box here. And he says it helps him out a lot by using this and I'll drop the details on it but it's just like door seal it actually ended up being like the exact width you need it to be to run along this rim which was pretty cool and it comes in a roll I think he said it was real cheap too I'm sure you can use all kind of stuff but this is what he did and he was happy with it and I figured since you know we were taking it off we might as well I've heard that the left side does it the most for people so it was worth it for me. Probably should have did the right side at the same time, but like I said, I don't I don't have a stock exhaust, so I don't hear a lot of things. 
I may have heard it before and it didn't bother me, but I definitely don't hear little things like that now, but kind of like the spark plugs. If we're going to be taking stuff apart and doing things and filming it, I might as well just do every little thing I can. So, And it was pretty easy. It, it's, it's like double-sided, but only one side sticky. So the side that comes off the roll is sticky, sticks on there pretty good, and we just rolled it around and cut it. So no measuring or anything, just run it around. Then you just peel the top part off and it makes a pretty good um, seal. It doesn't stick out or do anything weird. It didn't make it harder to to put the um, the top part back on or anything. Just peeled it off, popped it on. You can see that little part that Kevin's pointing out there. When you put the top back on, um, you just have to make sure you, you scoop around there first like a tab. So start there. And just slap it back on and if you have it pushed down all the way and everything and of course I'll eventually put the screws back in it seals up and you don't see any of that tape or anything I mean there's actually like a rim there so I don't even think it could spill could spill over if it was too long so really anything you have I think that was like some dollar store stuff anyway so next time you're at the store might be cool and then we screw those back on, but and I think that's more like screws on plastic, so it's real weird. You want to make sure you got it lined up good. And we're pretty confident with the spark plug, so we're ready to close everything back up. Just got to remember those two, the two colors. Make sure you plug it in, like like Kevin was telling his stories where he didn't, and uh, plug them back in in the same color they were before. And you're good to go if you're not familiar with Rikers that's actually the power to your USB charging so you can charge stuff while your 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 Riker is running it charges when your Riker is running so if you need to charge your phone or anything while you're going uh, it's a pretty cool little port it's got like a LED light where you can see it and everything it's pretty sweet pop it in as far as those uh, four tabs at the top was way easier than than pulling it off it just looks like we just lay it in there and it just clips in just fine it wasn't real audible so I wouldn't probably trip if you don't hear like a loud snap like when we removed it and then uh, that's that's as far as how the the front secures on the top and then you got the two screws down at the bottom and those are like screws on plastic too so make sure you have it lined up good you may have to like kind of shimmy the the front door lid back and forth so you can line up the holes real good so you're not just like screwing into other plastic but same two screws we just pop them back in that's pretty easy just takes a while to ratchet them in after that then I'm just gonna pop the panels back on and that's definitely something that's way easier I mean it's easy to take them off but even easier to pop them back on because you just take those plastic pins and that's another thing if you're in the habit of like switching out panels and everything like I am because I have these black ones the Chiquita, Chiquita banana ones plan on getting some more and you want to switch them out on the regular just kind of have a system like I just put them in that plastic bag so I don't lose them while I'm messing around because you could be in a parking lot or whatever or someone else's garage so you don't want to lose those because I do not have extra I guess it's something you could buy I probably should just order them now before something like that happens but they pop back on there is one pin that actually stays on the Riker the one that I'm pushing down right there if you want to push that one down first it might make more sense that's what I do and then you have the um, the four on top so I just knock out that part because once I start pushing the pins in I'm I'm just zooming getting it done so I put the whole other side on and then I push that one pin that stays on there the one fixed pin and then the four on each side just push right in and you can see that orange bungee cargo net making a cameo on this if you've seen some of my other videos you've seen the stuff we we get done with that so definitely recommend an orange cargo or doesn't matter what color it is but a bungee type net you can get carried away but if you're not into like storage on the Riker and everything with maybe like buying something that 
you probably shouldn't have if you were taking the Riker there. Like, you know, four different trips to fast food drive throughs But pretty easy as far as the panel goes. And really, you know, we cut it up a lot, but it was pretty easy switching out those spark plugs. But maybe not so much for a 900. And Kevin has got a thing where he can't stand to see Rikers as dirty as mine is. And I've actually even never, this is the first time it's ever been washed. He's showing a tip on getting that nasty sticker, that stock sticker that comes on the on the wheels. His fancy pressure washer just blows it off. But this pressure washer is pretty sweet, man. I would probably invest in something like that where, I mean, it squirts soap and everything, getting that Baja Blast trip off of there. Only to like right after this, we're, we're going to um, a restaurant in Austin called Uncle Nicky's. It slams. I get this crazy sound, which is called like a porchetta or, or something like that. I show a picture of it at the end. Man, it, it's too good. It was like their only hot sandwich, so, which is what I'm into. So I had to get a hold of that. But yeah, k and filters, spark plugs. Um, we get it cleaned up. The Ch Chiquita Banana Riker 600. But for the real part, the giveaway, man, this is this is going to be my favorite video just because I've been wanting to do something like this. I finally got the art in. That's it right there. Uh, I had a whole nother artist, not the one that commissioned that I commissioned to do the art, which is original. Like I said, that's a Thrill Mouse Moto design. But another one to hand print these, you know, silkscreen, the good stuff, good paper cardstock. I only did 25 of these. I have 25 and I'm giving away four of them and not only that there's more i'm giving out the thrill mouse moto decal that's four of them each one is going to go in those four envelopes that i showed earlier and th they're just waiting for addresses so here's the rules all you have to do is subscribe which a lot of you guys are already doing but if you're thinking about subscribing this is the time to do it all you have to do is um subscribe and then comment on this video you can say whatever you want. You can say you don't like the video. You can say, why do you do your hands like that when you drive past a motorcyclist and he doesn't wave back? Say whatever you want. Talk about how cool one of us are. I don't know. Or how much you like Little Nicky's right there. Or Uncle Nicky's. I keep saying Little Nicky's. Or the sandwich at the end of this. But that's it. Make sure you subscribe. Say that you subscribe in the comment and then whatever else you want. And I'm sending these out on Friday. So um, next Friday they are going out. I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna do the randomizer and everything, and let you know who won. I appreciate you guys subscribing and follow me. Video 28. That's nuts. Uh, Here's shrimp. Good I'm just taking it. Turning it around on him. He's he's gonna do. It. This is all I'm gonna do. It's gonna be a quick thing. Stop. Oh.